Hey guys, welcome to another episode in the deep playthrough of Gran Turismo 4. Um, I just got back into the game after it ran in the background uh, with B-Spec Bob doing the... Let me... I have to think now. What race was it? Ah, it's on the screen actually. The New York, <laughs> New York 200 miles. Uh, Bespoke Bob, this is the first race that he really started from um, the beginning all the way to the end. And uh, I gave him quite an overpowered car, the TVR uh, Speed 12, um, which he consistently crashed into the barrier in one corner. But yeah, he still, uh, the car was quick enough for him to be able to win. So that's nice. Um, so started in the previous episode and then I let it run in between episodes because yeah, it's basically the computer doing its own thing. Um, and here we are first place. So there we go. Let's watch one lap of replay to just get into the flow again. It's a pretty epic car, goddammit. Here, this is the corner where he consistently crashes into the wall. Ah, no, he didn't. Um, in this first lap, but he does so in many other laps. And this is actually a car that I really want to drive myself as well. But unfortunately, I just don't have the time to I already spent a lot of time in other endurance races this day, today, where B Spec Book really didn't perform, so I had to step in myself. But, anyways, this is an extremely epic Gran Turismo car. I think there were only a handful built of those Speed 12s. Here he goes, crazy quick. Three hundred, three hundred ten. Slam into the barrier here. <laughs> That's what I meant. That is what he did basically every uh, lap uh, afterwards. Um, anyways, I also, in between episodes, uh, while eating something, I saw a very cool uh, video of Ruffle Waffle. You should check him out on YouTube. He makes incredibly cool Gran Turismo videos. But this was about the GT500, the Japanese, I don't know, Grand Tour Championship or something. The JGTC cars, like the Supra, the Kestrel, Supra, the uh, NSXs, etc. Uh, which are also very prominent um, in this game, of course, and um, I have to, uh, it, it really hit me how much also Japanese culture is, or yeah, automotive culture is in this game with those cars. 
uh, the, he had like real life uh, JGTC uh, race footage. And that is indeed the Kestrel Supra, the wood one. Um, Supra, I think it is as well, but also the, um, the NSX's, I think also a Kestrel NSX. Um, but anyways, it was an amazing video. I would really uh, shout out to him. And uh, just if you, if you like car culture, if you like Gran Turismo, it's really nice to, to get that connection to the um, real life race events from uh, the 90s, early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s, uh, during the time when this game came out. And you really then see um, how accurate this game is compared with, with the, the cars. And, and for example, these, these um, GTRs, they, they, have, like, they are missing that, that rear bumper uh, in, in game. But that is what the real life cars I just saw also had indeed, with those huge diffusers and those side exhausts. And then also the liveries, it's, it's all totally um, spot on. And also the tracks, the, 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 the uh, Twin Ring Motegi, it's a real life Japanese circuit. Uh, of course, Fuji, Suzuka, it, it was all on that, on that calendar. So it's, uh, it's just really cool how close to, um, um, yeah, mostly, of course, global car, car culture with all the, uh, this game didn't have the Ferraris and Lamborghinis yet. So it only came in uh, GT5 with the licensing uh, issues resolved. But um, still, it has, has like the BMWs, the Mercedes, -ses. So it, it's, it's a global car culture game, but also with, uh, of course, an accent, like a little bit, a touch more the Japanese car, car culture with the NSXs, the Supras, the Skylines, and then also the race, uh, the variants of those cars. Just amazing how, how this game, how Polyphony Digital and um, Yakamochi, Yakanochi, I always forget. <laughs> Kazanori Yakamuchi or something? Kazanori. Uh, I always um, forget his name or not forget his name. I always mix it up with Hideo Kojima from um, Metal Gear Solid. But it is Yamaguchi Kazanori. S something like that. Uh, one moment, if I Google Gran Turismo director, I only get that stupid movie that came out. I didn't see it yet. Uh, and probably will not see it. Kasanori Yamaguchi is what I think. All right, where? I'm now in the wiki of, here it is, Katsunori Yama, Yamauchi. Katsunori Yamauchi. All right. Um, anyways, a long intro blabbering about nothing, but yeah, I just uh, want to express that I really respect what they did and what they still do. Of course, I'm very a bit disappointed with the lack of a meaningful singer player career mode in the newer games compared to, for instance, what we're doing now, which has like such a broad scope from ice arena to rally to um, tarmac racing. It, it, ha it has so much to, to little um, estate cars, the Volvo 240 GLT uh, estate, like the, the most broadest spectrum, automotive spectrum you, um, Uh, could imagine uh, singer player campaign wise, but uh, yeah, still also GT7. I'm looking also forward to, to uh, finishing that game, so to say, because it also has a very uh, unique aspects in itself. Actually, in that YouTube video of uh, Rolf Waffle, 
Um, he was talking about the, it was it was all about a certain Lamborghini uh, JGTC car, but he had some Lamborghini Miuras in the background, and I actually thought that it was like real life, but it was actually GT7 footage. So yeah, it's also their focus on realism that is still uh, unsurpassed. Um, anyways, I will stop blathering about the uh, idea of this episode is to start another endurance race, the eight hour twin ring Motegi. Dodge Charger Super B 426 Hemi, also pretty cool. And this is again a car that you win. I wonder whether this one is actually available in the dealership. I had that earlier with a car that I won, the RX-7 uh, race car. I wasn't even aware of its existence and then suddenly it, it's a very nice little surprise. Like cars that you don't see in the dealership, not in the new car dealership nor in the second hand dealership. And then suddenly you win it out of the blue. Very nice, but same as with this one. Is this one here. Here, this is a Dodge Charger. I here it is. So it is in there. Pretty epic car. Pretty damn. All these cars are epic. Man, this, this car really reignites my uh, love for cars, um, which I really, uh, for a long time in my life, almost always really had. Uh, but it's, it's subsided a bit the past 5 to 10 years and it's really getting back because of this game. Um, anyways, the idea of this episode is to start this one. I will let it run overnight. All cars permitted. Let's see what cars are in the field. Right, these are really like regular cars. Although, that skyline at the back, this one, RLM. I have that car as well, but of course we for B Spec Bob we do need a slightly overpowered car because otherwise he will not win. Because he's really a pretty bad driver. By the way, let's see how many experience points he got from that last New York race. We were at 25, 27, uh, 75, and now we have 32. So, yeah, nice, 700 extra points. So that's good. Um, that Skyline, I'm pretty sure I have that one as well. One moment. Um, it's that LM. Holy shit, I have a lot of skylines. God damn it. Are you kidding me? I have three pages of, of Nissans. That's really a lot. Was not exp Ah no! It are only two pages, but it's only it's filtered on uh, only Nissan. So if I press further we just get to the same uh, to the initial page anyways i was pretty sure here this one so that is 293 horsepower no it's not this one it also says lm the other one had lm as well 
Or maybe it's the, a car that I only saw. In the... Um, In the dealership or maybe it could also be that I won it and because it looked like a concept car that I actually ditched it from the garage because I'm not really a fan of concept cars but let's see if it's here Here, these are all the, these uh, JGTC cars, pretty cool, but anyways, I will quickly check it out, I forgot the name of it, but if we google uh, Gran Turismo Skyline LM Here, it's this one the GTR LM road going version. Right. Um, it's a tuned car produced by Nissan's in house tuning and motorsports firm Nismo. Right. And how do you get it? Race of the Red R emblem. Yeah, so pretty sure I completed that race already. And I probably removed it from the garage. Ah, here it could be as a Nismo model. Yes, here it is. Yeah, because I found it looking a little bit funky, but it's actually, I should have kept it because it's a unique car. It's not a concept car, it's actually a real uh, car. I cannot imagine that I would have dish ditched it. Let's see if I did that race. So, race of the Red R emblem. It's a Nismo GTR LM. Maybe that is why I didn't see it. Because I was looking at Nissan. Here it is. I was already thinking I, I would not have discarded I don't really like the looks of it, but it's a unique car. It's worthly, worthy of staying in the garage. Um, anywho, this will not be good enough for B-Spec Bob. We need 400 horsepower, I would say. We could take this one. See what else we have 
route to 400 horsepower mark. Preferably Japanese car, because it's a Japanese circuit. And there are so many cool cars in this game. M3 GTR. Supra RZ, that's like my own tuned Supra. Calibra touring car, Impreza super touring car. Also pretty unique car. Um, Nismo 400R. M3 GTR, didn't we? Ah, that's the M3 GTR race car, and this is the M3 GTR road car. All right, rough PTR, M3 CSL, Corvette, and here we really get into the 350, 300. That's too little for B Spec Bob. So, it's a BC Lancer Evo. Six Tommy Mackinnon edition RS huge intercooler at the front. At least, assuming in the spoiler down below that is an intercooler behind it, it does look like it. Um, yeah, let's just take that 400R. A tuned Skyline by Nismo. Let's put it on hard tires. bit competitive, not too overpowered. And yeah, it's really late. I didn't want to drive the first stint, but I also don't want to just, I mean, this is the first and probably last time that I'm really going through this career mode in my life. Maybe if I'm uh, retired in uh, 20 years, I will, um, revisit the game, but for now let's assume this is the last time. I also don't want to just not get the feel for these races and just have the computer do it. So, although it is late, I will drive the first stint. And then I will hand it over to Beast Pack Bob and hopefully he will be able to uh, Keep the pace while I take a break. because the other cars, there are some, seems to be some quicker cars, especially that S2000. Then during the preview, and we really need to have a quicker car than the rest. Wow. 
the car feels kind of sluggish to be honest it revs all the way to 9k of course I'm taking the lead here but I really wonder whether B-Spec Bob can also do that you do hear pretty cool turbo induction sounds God damn it, such a tricky corner. So easy to go wide there. Uh, we're actually not that much faster, only four seconds. Really good chance that B-Spec Bob will not be able to keep up. That S2000 I think is behind us. That car really is quite quick. It's also a tuner car. This car is crazy long gears. It goes almost 140 kmh in second gear. It's a really weird car. I don't understand why the front tires are warming up that much more quickly than the rear tires. Of course, they have to deal with the steering forces. But it's at the same time, it's a four-wheel drive car, so... I would also expect... Uh, the rear tires to warm up, because they're driving the car forwards. I don't think I ever went into uh, fourth gear in 
this car. I will read up about this car. Maybe it has like a specific purpose or something. So I don't remember GTRs to rev this high. So we are basically, I would say, gaming four seconds per lap. Let's get to set some better time. Fuck me. overshooting the corner Nice if we can get into the two tens. I'm overshooting many corners. breaking in time I'm still I want to hug that inside curve I'm not being I'm not able to 
Beautiful skybox, by the way. I think that was faster than the preceding lap. Let's try to get into the two nines. Although already screwing up a couple of corners here. First corner, second corner, not great. Overshooting this one. Speed lost over there. Too much speed lost over there. Not sure what happened over there, god damn it. The rest of the lap was quite okay. Seven.
fuck me. It went pretty okay, and then I screw it up. I do think I can get into the two nine, two nines. Like I'm almost standing still in that hairpin. Annoying going white again there. Really like screwing up a second in time, I would almost think.
my left front tire is going out. And again, fucking overshooting these corners. Is it over here? Nice. I really was like, holy shit, this is the pit. Um, Alright, I'm really afraid that B-Spec Bob doesn't have the speed to keep it up. Also the fact that we have to pit in first, it's not really um, positive. We are still in first place, that's pretty nice. Alright, B-Spec Bob can go a little bit faster, he's allowed to overtake. Alright, we're still 15% uh, seconds ahead, so a pit stop really goes quite quickly, 25 seconds or something. Um, let's speed up the time and see if he can manage the speeds. Uh, not at all, suddenly the S2000 has from 15 now nine seconds gap. Seven second gap, yeah, fuck me, man. I really have to give him an overpowered car. It's simply not working. Two second gap. Okay, the, the tires are Here, that S2000 is running circles. Around B-Spec Bob. Ah, fuck me. It, it literally took like less than one minute for it to lose a 15 second gap. What's up with that? Are you fucking kidding me? I find it so fucking annoying how bad he is at driving. Alright, the only saving grace I would say is that now the tires should become um, at operating temperature. But yeah, he drives 222. I drove a 210 or something, that's 12 seconds slower. He is 6 seconds slower than the rest of the field, than that S2000. That is not marginal, that are like huge differences. Here again, a 221, that is an incredibly bad time. I'm going to 
Have him push that he goes faster. Probably it could be because I disabled the uh, assists probably. The AI just cannot handle driving without assists. But the other problem here is... How long that S2000 can stay out. He didn't even pit yet, so... What is the race? Yeah, it's eight hours. But still, if over eight hours he just have to pit so much less, then we really have to be much quicker to compensate. And he's just not quicker at all. Fucking 213 versus a 219. 218, yeah, you know what? I just, I don't have time for this uh, crap. Fuck Beastback Bob, seriously, fuck him so fucking hard. He's so bad, I, I really cannot stand it. The, why would he drive times of 221 while the rest is driving 230? It is like like an absolute idiot. Absolute retard. But I'm just going to give him an extremely overpowered car and uh, because I already did my stint, so I, I did get the connection with the with the race itself. And for the rest, it's again Beastback Bob screwing it up. Literally, it sounds a bit childish to blame him, but I blame him. What the hell is this? Why is this now still on Nissan? You can say, do I want to give him a race car? That is like super unfair. And indeed it is, but it is such a retard. That that may be the best solution. Or the Celine as well. I know from the Celine that it does not need to pit as often. What did that uh, 400R, yeah, that's 400 horsepower, right? Yes. Uh, it's boring, we already raced this car, but I know it, it doesn't need to pit as often. And it's quite quick. So if that absolute retard of a B-Spec Bob is not able to get very quickly to first place in this car I don't know what to say anymore or what to do
Alright, he's doing his thing now, finally. You have to give him like two or three hundred horsepower more than the competition. But then at least he does what he has to do. I feel like an absolute cheater, but yeah, it is what it is. Um, B-Spec Bob, he already had a good car with that 400R. I was able to gain 4 seconds per lap on the competition. And he immediately loses like a 15 second lead within one minute. So, yeah, if you want to drive B-Spec, the only way is, at least as far as I'm concerned now, is to give him an overpowered car. Otherwise, it, you will just not win. You have to drive yourself. Uh, anyways, guys, uh, we'll let this run overnight. And then tomorrow we will continue like nothing ever happened. Hopefully, B-Spec Bob, it will be a cheerful wake up with B-Spec Bob um, finishing in first place. So far, it looks quite good, I have to say. Um, maybe I could even, yeah, I will set him to steady. Because that is probably better for the tires, etc. Maybe that will save over eight hours. That could save maybe um, a couple of pit stops. Assuming that if I say steady, that he will still be fast enough to stay ahead of the competition. Uh, anyways, hopefully uh, tomorrow morning we will see a golden cup earned by respect bob guys hope you enjoyed hope to see you there and for the meantime don't forget always to keep on gaming later